continue to talk. Uh, so we need mentality, we need entrepreneurs, but we need also to manage all these APIs that will be built with the, the API first mentality. And so for, for that, we're really glad to have Sean, Sean Klaus from the VP product management at MuleSoft, who will talk about the future of API management in a hybrid and multi-cloud world. Hello, Sean, how are you? I'm very good, Mehdi. Thank you. Great to be here. And uh, it was really great to follow Tanya as well. That was a really great session. I think, we, you know, our narratives will really mesh really well. So looking forward yep. to this. And we have you, you to keep the level high. So perfect. I let you for 20, 20 minutes plus five minute question. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you, everybody. I'm excited to be here to talk a little bit about the future of API management in what I'm sure many of you will agree is an increasingly complex and hybrid world. So most of what I'm gonna be talking about over the next 15 to 20 minutes is gonna be future looking. I'm gonna talk about a vision for the future, which means that I have to make a disclaimer. Um, it's a typical legal disclaimer. If you're using this session to consider an investment in any MuleSoft technology, then please base any purchasing decision you might make on the product that exists today rather than anything I describe about our plans for the future. Thank you for tolerating that. And uh, with the legal stuff out of the way, let's take a quick overview of where we're headed and what I'm planning on talking about today. So first, I'd like to talk about where API management is today, how it evolved there, and how the world has changed in ways that make it harder than it's ever been to achieve the benefits of APIs at scale, just like you heard Tanya talk about. From there, I'd like to talk about some of the options for adapting and tackling these challenges head on in ways that will enable us to accelerate and continue to accelerate rather than decelerate innovation. Then I'd briefly like to walk through um, some of the uh, innovations that MuleSoft will be bringing to life over the coming year to tackle some of these challenges. And then I'll wrap up with some key takeaways and some next steps. So it's gonna surprise exactly nobody uh, attending today or in this room that the proliferation of APIs has been accelerating for many years now. Now what did surprise all of us, obviously over the past year and a half was COVID. And what happened following COVID was an immediate pressing need for all businesses to go digital all at the same time. In fact, McKinsey estimates that uh, post COVID, 64% of all customer inter interactions are going to be digital. That's an incredible acceleration. Now, of course, this rush towards digital experiences is fundamentally powered by APIs. And so the explosion of APIs is only and can only accelerate. So the explosion of APIs is worthwhile and necessary, but it's also amplified complexity. As organizations have focused on team autonomy and team speed, we've seen an expansion in the underlying technology stacks. So some teams might prefer working with Java, deploying to Azure and using Nginx as their API gateway. Others might prefer to use Lambda services on AWS using Amazon's API gateway. Now fundamentally letting teams across the world innovate and own their environments in this way has undoubtedly accelerated the outcomes we're looking for, but it's come with its own set of challenges. First, it's harder than ever before for teams to discover and leverage the APIs created by other teams to speed up their own work. There's an incredible amount of APIs being published, but how do you find them and use them and understand them? Second, the disconnected management consoles of the different platforms has made it really tedious to get visibility into everything that's going on and be sure that it's all working correctly. And finally, best practices and guidelines have ended up siloed across different teams. So it's hard to be sure that, being, that what's being deployed is secure and it meets the compliance requirements of your organization. Now you may be thinking that these seem like small technical challenges, but in reality, they're actually big business issues and customers aren't waiting to figure this out. How do we unlock innovation while still um, uh, being sure that we're delivering something that's safe, secure, scalable, et cetera. This, there's a fundamental underlying conundrum that unlocking uh, productivity from your IT teams requires flexibility, but that that can't come at the cost of enterprise grade visibility across all these different services. One customer of ours I was speaking to recently has tens of thousands of developers and they were frustrated that they could not even approximate how many APIs were deployed in production and they definitely couldn't audit how all of those APIs were protected and whether or not they were safe. So there's a big question at the root of all of this, which is how we adapt to this in complex environment while still accelerating innovation. And I think that the key is really embracing diversity and flexibility 
in deployment options for teams while, while compensating for that autonomy by introducing consistent systems that give you visibility, management, and governance on top. So the kind of yin and yang. Put very simply, we already have heterogeneous environments with many different APIs and API technologies. We want to maintain flexibility in the type of technologies and environments we use, yet we also want to maintain consistent security and visibility. I know that that's a lot easier said than done, so let's go one click down. The key is balancing our objectives so that each element of deployment flexibility is mirrored by a global view. So in particular, we want to maintain flexibility on the types of APIs we use and mirror that with the capability to govern them at scale. We want to pick the best cloud native API gateway based on our use case, yet we also want to be able to observe all of those APIs across all environments. So let me talk specifically about why each of these is so important. Along with the explosion in APIs in the enterprise, we've also seen an explosion in different API types and the underlying protocols that they use. Now that wasn't an accident, it was very deliberate because each API type has unique advantages that make it worthwhile introducing. So for example, GraphQL has been successful and it's very useful to consume data from many systems in one request or to offer just one API endpoint that's usable by many different types of clients now and in the future. You heard Tanya talk about async API, which is a new important specification that's great for democratizing event-driven architectures by making them easier to understand, leverage, and reuse. So obviously the developers in your org need the flexibility to use the technology of their choice according to the specific use case they're trying to deliver to be able to do, to be able to do it in the most innovative, direct, and uh, fast way. However, while all of these APIs are accelerators of every business, they, they are also risky. They can expose data and capabilities that are risky. They could violate compliance rules or even just not be useful across the company if they don't fit company standards so other teams can't really understand them and use them the way they need in their architectures. So traditionally, organizations have solved these risks through things like compliance checklists that the teams have to conduct before they ship their code into production. Or they've used API security tools to try and detect problems in what's being deployed at runtime. Now, what both of those approaches have in common is that they operate after developers have already built the, the relevant services. And that's exactly when it's the most costly to fix or detect any problems. So what we really need is for APIs to comply with company, company and regulatory standards as they're being designed. We wanna shift the work left to when it's easiest to fix. This is a problem worth solving. I mean, IDC reports that compliance efforts for banks alone cost over $300 billion a year. So there's clearly money to be saved here. But I think more importantly than the money saving bit, we can unlock team innovation by helping them move faster and avoiding rework by enabling them to co-innovate and innovate on top of the company standards as they go to know what they are, to not be blindsided and surprised by them. What, one other way we can unlock innovation is at the runtime. So while teams obviously still need API gateways in order to protect their APIs and separate API management from the business logic itself, the diversity of deployment environments in the world today and in use today means it just doesn't make sense to pick just one API gateway technology. Instead, teams are looking to choose the lightest API gateway with the features that they need that is the easiest fit for their tooling and environment. Now, that just makes sense, particularly in microservice environments where the gateway has to be right-sized to avoid becoming a deployment or a COGS bottleneck. You can't have microservices protected by a, a big, fully-featured enterprise gateway. That just doesn't make sense. So we need to right-size the gateways and, be, and use heterogeneous gateways in order to match the deployment architectures we're using. And that makes sense and will allow, enable us to go faster. But we can't let that runtime diversity lead to organizations flying blind. So once the gateways and APIs are deployed, the next step is still to manage, is still to manage and observe them. So API products are spread across different environments and each cloud vendor usually has different management and monitoring views. That means that the customer has to invest in learning the many cloud consoles that they have and spend significant time correlating data across those different views 
in order to try and gain the context that they're looking for, an actual insight rather than just a bunch of data. I like to think of this as a split horizon type of problem. There's no one horizon, there's no one point of reference. And it means that, the, that this type of split horizon management and monitoring makes it difficult to track problems quickly. It's difficult to understand your overall security or compliance risk. So what we really need is a, is a unified monitoring and management view to match the heterogeneous and complex uh, runtime and deployment topologies. So those are some of the high level uh, ideas. Next, I'd like to give you an understanding of what we're doing at MuleSoft to help tackle some of those problems. To set some context, most of you would know that, that we have full lifecycle API management today already in the MuleSoft AnyPoint platform. And MuleSoft is actually the leading API management solution in the marketplace. Today, primarily, most of those solutions are done for APIs that are either built on MuleSoft or protected using our Mule gateway. And, but this year, we're opening the aperture far beyond that it, around the themes I talked about um, just a second ago. So this year, we're expanding our API cataloging capabilities, no matter where the APIs are deployed or what gateway is used to protect them. So specifically, we're making it easy to unlock every API in your organization by leveraging your DevOps best practices. They'll be cataloged within AnyPoint Exchange, which is our existing marketplace for discovery and reuse of API and integration assets. Beyond just the cataloging and productization, we're also improving the way you can design API consumption experiences. APIs that, that are not reused are not achieving their full potential. So how do you build a purpose-built, vibrant community around your APIs and APIs as products, as you heard Tanya talk about? So we're providing you with fully built templated experiences in which customers can publish their APIs that are cataloged in, in, in Exchange within minutes. And based on your needs, you can extend those experiences to internal or external audiences. In addition to cataloging, we're also allowing customers to apply governance to every API as part of the API lifecycle and at scale. So firstly, customers can catalog their governance rules written in AML, the, the anything modeling language, in any point exchange. And that enables them to share best practices that are machine readable and people person readable, human readable with other developers so that they can all understand and have a common vernacular for what the standards are inside the organization. Next, we have support for that directly within our design tooling to apply those centrally cataloged and understood rules so that governance can be consistent across APIs all the way from early design time. And finally, we'll make governance a part of the DevOps lifecycle. So from the moment the customer first commits their code, we'll check the API contract and the spec so that we can enforce and guide towards governance standards within the CI CD pipeline. Again, shifting this, this process all the way left so that teams can avoid rework and accelerate their efforts. We're also going to be embracing the gateway diversity that I spoke about quite a bit earlier. So to do that, we will be releasing our own version of a fast containerized gateway built on top of Envoy. But it's not just about the gateway. We'll use this lightweight gateway technology to extend our enterprise grade API management capabilities to any service, no matter the, the size of the work, workload or the service, the language it's written in or the cloud it's deployed to. Of course, the gateway is only as good as its policies, so we'll also extend and enhance our already extensive policy portfolio to support the common traffic management policies you're looking for. So overall with this release, what we're aiming to do is to support lightweight use cases of any kind, no matter what they are. So whether you already have an Istio service mesh or want to deploy a lightweight API gateway as part of your source and CI CD workflow, or you're looking for our current enterprise grade, uh, grade gateway, it just doesn't matter. You pick the pattern and gateway, and we'll bring the value of any point platform with full lifecycle API management, security, and observability. We're also making it easier to deploy gateways or Mule integration applications wherever you need them. As you probably know, MuleSoft's runtime fabric is our appliance-based approach to running Mule applications and gateways in Kubernetes on bare metal servers or virtual machines. And we're excited to announce that, that runtime fabric on AKS, EKS, and GKE is now available. And that makes it easy to deploy Mule workloads into existing 
AKS and EKS and GKE manage Kubernetes environments on Azure, AWS, and GCP. Now, again, that's all available now to customers. And in the future, we'll look to expand our interoperability with support for Red Hat, Red Hat OpenShift and open it up to be installed in any Kubernetes distribution of your choice. Beyond the gateways, we're also expanding our monitoring capabilities across all enterprise APIs, not just the ones using Mule. So we're going to provide a single monitoring view of APIs from the AnyPoint platform, on-premise deployments, and other major cloud providers with really limited effort from you. To achieve this, we'll, supply, we'll simplify our views and metrics to provide just the right context for all APIs, not just the ones that are using Mule. In parallel, we're also investing in improving our capabilities, such as dashboards, logging, and alerts, to help our customers work effectively at enterprise scale across all of their APIs. And those capabilities will act as a bedrock for our vision in API monitoring beyond the coming year will also help will also help shift our customers priority from simply data analysis to quickly uh, driving the results they're looking for through answers and advanced correlation including capabilities like recommendations and self healing so that's quite a lot of quite a lot that I've walked you through so now I'd like to do a quick recap and go over some of the takeaways we have a north star goal and we're doing a lot of things here at MuleSoft to help you reach these North Star goals. So first, we'll enable you to discover any APIs and, uh, and create them and catalog them into any point platform for reuse with just a few commands. We're also going to expand the languages we support, the language and spec types we, sp we support directly inside the platform. Next, you can govern your API specs with policies at design time and enforce those standards all the way through your development lifecycle to accelerate the outcomes you're looking for. You can protect your APIs with a new ultra-fast Mule gateway and with, with an enhanced API policy portfolio. And finally, you can deploy these APIs and gateways to any cloud environment and observe them all from one single place. So the key takeaways from today, with the overwhelming need for digital transformation and the accompanying explosion in API types and deployment environments, teams need the flexibility to take advantage of the different technologies that fit their use cases. However, with the many thousands of APIs exploding across deployment types and uh, deployment models, architectures, and everything else, organizations struggle with reuse, visibility, and security. Over the coming year, we're looking to address these challenges by providing full lifecycle API management as an open platform with an open aperture to any API to encompass this diversity and resilience that exists in the runtime environments. If you'd like to learn more about some of what I just walked you through, please join my colleagues um, that will be running a workshop uh, tomorrow, July 1st at 1.15 PDT. Um, they can walk you through some more of this detail bound to be a great session. And with that, I'd love to thank you for attending today's presentation. I hope you're all as excited about this vision as I am. And uh, now I'd love to open up to any questions that might that might have been received. So yes, we have uh, we have some questions. So uh, today, what is the next step of the of API management? Yeah, so, so, so we think that um, API management uh, traditionally has been about solving um, with one uh, with one approach to API management, usually centered around the gateway throughout the entire enterprise architecture. And we just don't think that that method works anymore. Um, instead of the, the key being to choose one gateway, uh, it, the key is now to figure out how do you embrace uh, diversity of API types, API deployment models, API architectures, while still delivering observability, management, security, governance, and the capabilities you need. So you need to embrace a heterogeneous API management landscape at runtime while still delivering observability and monitoring that is global and that can see across all of the infrastructure. Do you see app management and API management gathering in terms of offer in the future? 
That's a really good question. Um, so, so when I think about APIs, I always think about APIs as ultimately being building blocks, right? Um, they're building blocks through which you can compose new digital capabilities for every business everywhere. They're the fundamental currency of innovation in the modern world. And so I think you, you're really onto something when you say, well, how does app management differ from API management? If APIs present the unlocked value of an app, how are they different? They're, they're not different. Um, so I think that's very interesting to think about. And when we, at MuleSoft, we talk a lot about the composable business, right? And I think the composable business is fundamentally built on top of APIs that are building blocks that represent the capabilities of apps. In my mind, they are, they are the same thing. They, they, are, they end up being the same thing, but obviously that's a journey we're all on. Yeah, on my side, I would ask the question about identity access management and API management. Sometimes they also some, they seem to merge at some point. Um, uh, yeah, do you do you see it also? Um, it's, so it's really interesting how because APIs are like the information currency, like all everything is is flowing through APIs. They're at the conjunction of all of these things. So I agree. Like identity and access management is almost best done at the API layer. It has to be done there. It can't be done anywhere else. But you can say the same of monitoring. Like monitoring is best done at the API layer because you know what is being monitored. Like you, you have the semantics of the thing. You could you could say the same about policies. Um, you know other types of enforcement of SLAs, etc. So I think that the API economy is so amazing and so much fun because it's such a beautifully great place to do so many things that enterprises need. So we're definitely seeing some of what you're describing too, Mitt. So we have two more questions. How do you how would you explain the importance of API management to uh, top executives? Um, the, so yeah, the way I describe it is is that your organization has all of this incredible capability, right? It can do all of these things. It has these latent capabilities and you want to connect those capabilities to as many customers as possible. You want to drive competitive advantage using the capabilities through to your customers. Now, how do you unlock that? The way you do that is by unlocking those capabilities through APIs. APIs are fundamentally digital transformation and digital transformation is fundamentally competitive advantage. So, so I often talk about it as building blocks, honestly. Like uh, uh, building blocks are APIs and APIs are the future. APIs are the only way to move quickly and to out, out compete your competition. And we have a, a last question. Uh, uh, do you need to invest, do, do you need to involve the, the business into defining KPIs for APIs? Like uh, KPIs for API management, you can say, but does the business needs to be involved? Yeah, I am. Um, I, I love that question um, because again, it points at the fact that APIs intersect with all these different concerns on the technology domain and on the business domain. The purpose of an API is to drive business advantage. Ultimately, it's to drive reuse. It's to drive capabilities that can be reused everywhere else. So absolutely, the business needs to be involved. I would argue that today, the business is not involved enough. And in fact, I heard Tanya talk about the fact that you need to think about it from the business perspective. I completely agree. And measure it from the business perspective, because that's where competitive advantage comes from. So I think that's a really great way to think about it. Yeah. Perfect. I think we. Uh, this is all the question we had. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you for Fantastic. this uh, complete explanation. And <laughs> looking forward to see you at uh, other APIs conferences. Really great to be here. Thank you very much, Mehdi. Cheers. Thank you, Sean.